Hi everyone, and welcome back to Anne's Family Recipe. So have you heard of the butter board? Basically, people are taking their charcuterie boards and instead of putting meats or cheeses on them, they're putting spreads like butter. I'll pop up a picture here of the one that was kind of trending recently, I think on TikTok, but I wanted to take that idea and make some fun seasonal iterations. So today I have a Thanksgiving butter board for you, a Christmas frosting board, and a little more elevated, something for the adults, although my kids like it too, uh, the cream cheese board with lox and bagels. They're all delicious. They all look really nice too, I think. I'm not an artist, but they came together pretty well. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You can follow me over on Instagram at Anne's Family Recipe and give this video a thumbs up. Now let me show you my boards. First of all, I wanted to share with you my actual boards. This is a set of three bamboo cutting boards I found at Walmart. It was $15 for the set, and I love the three different sizes, the neutral tone of the wood, the fact that they're very simple, and the fact that none of them are too large. My first board could be used for any upcoming family gathering, a brunch for Thanksgiving or Christmas or even New Year's Day. This is a cream cheese and lox board with bagels. I'm starting by preparing my topping. So this is a small amount of finely diced red onion, and I soaked this in a little bit of water because I've heard that that can draw out some of the sharp and strong flavor. I also finely diced some tomatoes. When I say a bagel with cream cheese and lox, lox is another word for smoked salmon. And I found this package of cold smoked Atlantic salmon at Aldi. It's very readily available and it's pretty inexpensive. This was under $5 and a little bit goes a long way. It has a very delicate texture and a nice smoked flavor. And I didn't use too much. I had plenty left over for more bagels throughout my week, but I could still taste that smoked salmon flavor on my spread. So I grabbed my medium sized board and tried to artfully spread some cream cheese on. That's where I may fall short a little bit here, but um, basically you just wanna get the cream cheese onto the board. And then I used my hands to tear off little bits of the smoked salmon. I sprinkled over the diced tomatoes and red onions, and I added some caper berries. These come in various sizes. This is sort of the more traditional size you'll find. They're small, very salty, Berries. They're in a brine. And then I thought it would add some visual appeal if I added some everything bagel seasoning. And I feel like a lot of people have this in their pantry, so here's another way you can use it. Another thing you could add is some fresh dill. That would pair nicely with all of these ingredients. Also, you could use some lemon zest. That would look pretty and give a nice fresh flavor to this dip. Then I toasted up some mini bagels. You could use full size. This is just what I had on hand. Tore them up by hand and scattered them around my board. And I loved the lighting. I made this on a Saturday morning. We typically don't have a lot of bright sunny days here in Pittsburgh, but I had to capture the dip in the gorgeous morning light. And then my husband and I gobbled this up for breakfast. And in fact, my daughter really enjoyed this too. She loved that smoked salmon flavor. And of course, you don't have to do a savory cream cheese board. Yours could be sweet, but I thought this was a really fun idea. I serve mine with a knife so people can scoop some up and spread it onto their bagels. And it's just a really fun way to entertain. Next up, I'm tackling the butterboard and I created a turkey-shaped butter board with three sweet butters. I started by softening some pure Irish butter. This is the Aldi brand, but it's very comparable to Kerrygold. It's super rich and creamy with a nice salty flavor too, so it automatically balances out all the sweet ingredients we're gonna add. So this package is the equivalent of two sticks of butter, so I only used half, and then I divided that into thirds, and I put one third into a bowl, another third into a bowl, and the last third into my mini food processor. So for the first third of butter, I'm gonna make cinnamon sugar butter. Now to make cinnamon sugar, it's just a ratio you need to remember 
four parts sugar to one part cinnamon. So you can make this in any quantity that you want. I used a quarter cup of sugar to one tablespoon of cinnamon, and then I added a tablespoon of this mixture into my softened butter. So you can just save the rest of the cinnamon sugar in a Tupperware and use it on cinnamon toast or to top muffins and quick breads. I love having that on hand in my pantry. So I had to soften my butter a little bit in the microwave because my kitchen is always quite cold, but you just wanna be able to mix it together until everything's combined. For the next butter, I'm adding in a tablespoon of honey, and then again, stirring it until combined. For my last compound butter, I'm adding dried cranberries and rosemary. So I used about a tablespoon of dried cranberries and a quarter teaspoon of dried rosemary. Now the only thing I regret is that I didn't pulse the rosemary and cranberries first before adding the butter, but it came together okay. I had to do it a couple times and scrape it down in between, but it had an amazing flavor and it was pretty easy to spread. You do not have to go the extra step and make this into a turkey, but I do recommend all of these butters. They have great flavor and it would just add a little variety to your Thanksgiving table. Now, if you do wanna make the turkey, I used a pear for the body. I just sliced it in half and I found this pretty Bartlett pear that had a little reddish tone to it. And then I just freehanded the feathers. So I placed my halved pear onto the board. Again, I think I used my medium size board and I used a knife to place the butter around the body in a little bit of a feather-like pattern. You could use a variety of different ingredients to make the turkey's face. I found some whole cloves in my spice cabinet, so I used two of those for the eyes and an additional one upside down for the beak, and then beneath that I put a dried cranberry, and I just made a little slit in the pear and tucked it in. To serve with the butterboard, I prepared some frozen Parker House rolls. These are the Sister Schubert's brand. They're delicious and buttery and fluffy. This is what my mom always brings for Thanksgiving. And they paired perfectly with these incredible tasting butters. We loved this so much. And I'm glad I only used one stick of butter because I knew it was gonna be good and we would gobble it up. Last, but certainly not least, is a frosting board with sugar cookies for dipping. Now this one is, again, very customizable, just like the others, and you could go as store-bought or as homemade as you would like with this. Today I'm using a bagged sugar cookie mix, and then I am going to make my own homemade buttercream frosting, which is amazing. You should make it too. My sugar cookie mix only required one stick of softened butter, one egg, and a little bit of elbow grease <laughs> to get it all together. Um, I started with a wooden spoon, which was pictured on the back of the packaging, but it just wasn't bringing the mixture together. So I ended up going in with my hands and that formed a really nice dough that I could work with. I scooped this out with my small cookie scoop onto my silicone mat lined baking sheet. And then I just baked these according to the package directions. I think it was about 12 minutes at 375 degrees. I wanted to share these stackable cooling racks with you. This is where I was cooling my sugar cookies after they baked, and they're a great space saver if you have a small kitchen or are just baking in large quantities. Also, I've used these in my refrigerator if I need to stack multiple dishes that I've made and I don't have enough room on the shelves. So I'm gonna link these for you in my description box below if you're interested in checking them out.
While my cookies cooled, I made my homemade buttercream frosting. This is one stick of softened unsalted butter, and then to that I'll add one and a half cups of powdered sugar, about a half a cup at a time. I also added in about a half a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract, a pinch of salt, and I would say a splash of heavy cream. I started with about a teaspoon, and I think I added in a couple drops more just to get to the consistency that I wanted for my frosting. As you saw earlier, I decided to make a Christmas tree, so I did add a few drops of green gel food coloring to make my frosting green. You could make any pattern or design that you want. I think a stocking, an ornament, a candy cane, all would be really cute. The sky's the limit here, but it was fun to add that little touch of color. For the frosting, I used my large board, and I placed all of the frosting kind of vertically on the center of the board and then use my knife to swoop it out into the different branches. And then once I had the general shape, I used a clean metal knife and sort of sharpened up the edges so the branches came to a nice point. And I made a little trunk at the bottom too. And then as an added decoration, I used some sprinkles from this Christmas collection that I bought at Walmart. <music> Lastly, I placed the baked sugar cookies all around the bottom, kind of like little gifts. And then my husband had the brilliant idea to cut one of them into a star shape as a tree topper. So he cut that out for me and I placed that gingerly on top. <music> This frosting board was a huge hit with kids and adults alike. Not only was that packaged sugar cookie mix delicious, but this homemade buttercream frosting recipe is just out of this world. You can see my kids kind of dug right in. I would recommend serving this with a knife for your guests just for sanitary reasons, but you could dunk your cookies or spread as little or as much frosting on top as you want, and everyone is just going to love it. Again, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram, and give this video a thumbs up if you liked my leveled up butter bores here today. Thank you so much for joining me here in my kitchen, and I'll see you again soon.